Weber to come and hear our great speaker and another beautiful lecture on calligraphy, this time connected with buildings. And in fact, our next speaker in a week or two's time will also be talking about inscriptions on buildings, Suzanne Babai. Uh, <clears throat> well, it's a great pleasure to introduce Hamid again to those of you who weren't here for his first lecture. Uh, Hamid is a visiting fellow supported by the British Academy, British Institute of Persian Studies. And in fact, he's only got about three more weeks, I guess. So he's been in Cambridge for the last uh, three months and um, been a very kind and helpful colleague. He might, you might like to say he's just published a beautiful book called The Lives of the uh, Calligraphers uh, with a lot of handsome illustrations and another sort of adornment to our library and the yard of guard of his visit. So I'm sure people will start walking in as soon as we start. But anyway, I mean, so he's going to talk about Persian calligraphy and Indian inscriptions. And you may remember that actually he did his PhD in India, in Delhi, and a lot of the material that he's worked with is in fact from India. So, thank you. It's my great uh, pleasure uh, to be here and uh, have a second uh, presentation about uh, Persian calligraphy and uh, for this session <coughs> I want to speak about Persian calligraphy uh, in India and uh, especially it's uh, related to uh, inscriptions. Persian calligraphy in Indian inscriptions. Studying uh, inscriptions is a subcategory of archaeology in India. During the last century, most of the surviving Inscription, inscriptions have been studied fully. In Epigraphia Indica, the annual book of epigraphical studies in India published from <coughs> uh, 1907 to 1977, hundreds of articles on Islamic inscriptions, Persian and Arabic, were presented. Qulam Yazdani and Ziauddin Desai, two famous figures in this field, dedicated a lifetime to investigate them. One of the best references in this subject is Seyrul Manazel by Mirza Sangin Beg, in which he describes the inscriptions of Delhi. Another reference that covers the inscriptions of India entitled Naqshapar Sibar Ahjar Hind, Persian language uh, engraved on Indian inscriptions by Ali Asghar Hikmat, was published in 1958. In this presentation, uh, we divide the uh, inscription <coughs> from India to uh, two parts. Uh, one of them is related to Delhi. Another name of this is uh, Shah Jahanabad in Shah Jahan period. And another related to Deccan and uh, another district of uh, India. The history of epigraphy can be dated back to the era of Ashoka, the Indian king who ruled from 273 to 232 BC. Some inscriptions in Barahmi and Khurushti script have survived from that period. In the Islamic period, significant changes were made concerning the artic, the artist, the artistic and aesthetic 
aspects of epigraphy. Most of them can be found in mosques and palaces, and the rest are mainly in public places and on gravestones. Indian inscriptions are either in Arabic or Persian languages. The one in Arabic are frequent uh, until the 12th century, but from then on. <coughs> they are limited to religious texts of the Quran and the Hadith. The oldest Arabic inscription discovered on the wall of a well established by an Iranian man named Abu Ja'far Jozjani in the Hund village near Sand Riverside, dated back to 1089, and it preserved in Peshawar Museum in Pakistan. The oldest Persian inscription is located in Delhi on the threshold of the eastern gate of <coughs> Hope Battle Islam. It's an image of this. Hope Battle Islam Mosque and dated back to <coughs> 1191. On it is written this mosque is built by Qutbuddin uh, Ibak. Qutbuddin Ibak. God bless him. In Persian, it's uh, in Masjid Rabun Yad Kar Qutbuddin, Khuda Rahmat Konad, Wa Har Kibinad In, Khair Ra Dua Konad. Although the mosque's mihrabs are decorated with very fine calligraphy in Kufic style, yes, it's a part of <coughs> ruined mihrab of Qutbatul Islam. Very fine calligraphy in Kufic style. The script of the inscriptions is in a low quality mixture of souls and nas. From the 12th century onward, numerous numerous inscriptions uh, were uh, produced in the Persian languages using souls, nas, and nastaliq scripts. Among all, the highlight of Persian calligraphy in India was in the period from Humayun to Aurangzeb period, when due uh, to the immigration of Iranian masters to India, a great change in the quality of calligraphy is clear. For instance, the excellent works of Akbar gravestone and uh, the Taj Mahal in Agra are the, uh, and uh, also uh, the Atke Khan tomb in Delhi were written by Iranian calligraphy masters. The Persian uh, language was introduced uh, into India in the Ghaznavid era by Sultan Mahmud attacked in 1002. But uh, it appeared on craved stone and inscription only about 200 years after that. It's some details uh, from Qubbatul Islam uh, Masjid. In the period of Muhammad Sam Ghuri, the mosque of Qubbatul uh, Islam, another name of this in Delhi is Qubbatul Islam. Qubbatul Islam was built in Mehruli in 1191 by one of the uh, commanders, Qutbuddin Ibak. There is an inscription on the frieze of the mosque Eastern Gate in which can be read a line of the Quran aligned with another sentence stating that the mosque has built, constructed by using the 
material of 27 destroyed Hindu shrines in 1191. And it's the tale of Mehrab of Qubbatul Islam. <coughs> it's a Kufic style, Arabesque and uh, Indian souls style. The stone that uh, used in inscription up to <coughs> Mughal period are all of them a red stone with some uh, <coughs> white point. And it's a different design of Allah. It's a part of <coughs> at the left uh, uh, one uh, mihrab and this part it's a uh, part of them uh, arabesque and in this part is decorative kufic and in two lines both of them are like this just arabesque and another line is just indian soul scribe It's the, that uh, red stone with some white point. It's another <coughs> form of decorative uh, above the mihrab. And it's another mihrab. Iltutmish Om, Iltutmish, <coughs> the deputy of Otvoddin, has a unique mausoleum uh, to the north of Obbatul Islam Mosque. All the walls are covered with excellent Kufi scripts. It's entrance of Iltutmish mausoleum and part of wall it's a decorative <coughs> kufic style yes and uh, another place in delhi complex of nizamuddin dargah is a famous uh, sufi in chesti <coughs> Nizamuddin Cheshti complex. Nizamuddin was a great Cheshti Sufi who died in uh, 3025. There are several other graves in his uh, mausoleum uh, belonging to famous rulers and well-known poets such as Amir Khosrow Dehlavi. It's near the uh, grave of uh, his <coughs> Masters uh, Nizamuddin. It's an old uh, mosque near the Nizamuddin called the Kutla Nizamuddin Mosque. This mosque was constructed <coughs> in Firuz Shah reign in 1370. Apart from the holy lines of the Quran, its inscription bears a Persian description of Firuz Shah. It's a source style, but uh, with accent of Indian. And uh, more another inscription in this complex, such as this in Nastalir style. It's Persian. In second line is Hakim Shah Jahanabad. It's another name of uh, Delhi in the, this date in <coughs> Shah Jahan period or Safavi uh, period in Iran. Another epitaph uh, 
uh, in this complex is Jahanara Tom, a magnificent example of Mu'arra inscription in the epitaph of Shah Jahan's daughter in Persian source script, dated back to 1681. Uh, the lines engraved on the marble were filled with a kind of black stone called Musa. It's a detail of this epitaph. People destroyed this. The Persian text uh, of this epitaph is Hoval Hayyul Gayyum, Begayr Sabzana Pushat Kasi Mazar Mara, Kabr Push Gariban, Hamin Kia Basast Al Fadirat Al Fadiya Jahan Ara Murid Khajegan Chasht. In this image, we can see the black stone Musa in the marble. It's a technique uh, in inscription uh, of India called uh, Mu'arraq, Mu'arraq stone. And some of them, people um, can destroy the black stone and uh, another one. Another mosque in Delhi is Kali or Kalan, means <coughs> big. Kalan Masjid, Kalan Mosque. Kalan Mosque, located in the Turkaman Gate of Delhi, has a Persian inscription on white marble in <coughs> Muarrab. Muarrab and Muhaqqab script written in 1387. It's the inscription. It's very difficult to take a photograph, but um, <coughs> with some technique from the opposite building and uh, with some special lens, I can <coughs> took this inscription of Kalan Mosque with the date. It's related to Firuz Shah period. And the famous and the notable mosque in Delhi is the Bara Mosque or Bara Masjid in Indian language. The mosque built in Sekandar Ludi's time in 1494 has more than 100 inscriptions in Indian souls. Most of them are made with plaster and saruj on the <coughs> frieze of the mihrabs. We can see Persian poems. All of them made uh, with plaster and saruj. Saruj is a uh, mixed uh, some material like a white part of egg with plaster and other materials. It's the mehrabs, a detail of one of entrance. They are souls but uh, in Indian accent. and some uh, like medallion. <coughs> and it's uh, near the one of mihrabs, contains some uh, Persian poems. It's another <coughs> design of Allah, sometimes another Yabarqab or sometimes like this. Another mosque of Delhi 
is mosque of Purana Qila or Old Fort. There is a great mosque in the Purana Qila dated back to, to the Shir Shah Suri period. It has some Quranic scripts and a few Persian poems on, the, on its mihrabs. From this time, marble <coughs> entrance to the inscription bore the red stone. White marble with uh, Quranic text in Indian style of souls. And it's another mihrab <coughs> with uh, some Persian poems. Elahi Rahm Kun Kalu Deganim Bekhune Del Jagar Palu Deganim. It's uh, very rare in Iran we can find Persian poems in the mihrab of mosque, but in India it's not rare. Khan Om, one of the most important places from an epigraphical point of view is Atkehan Tom, constructed by Khodaholi in 1566. There are three <coughs> gravestones, it's the entrance and the inscription with the name of <clears throat> Master Hodaholi. There are three gravestones in there. It's a, three, uh, a part of three gravestones in there with Quranic text on them written in Soul's script. One <coughs> One, uh, four sides of the building, there are a Quranic inscription as <coughs> uh, very filled in Persian souls script. A uh, important uh, point about uh, this poem is that not only it has the name of the uh, <coughs> architect and date of construction, but also the calligraphic text bear the signatures of the artist. We have <coughs> several uh, signature of artists at the end of this, like this, Katabahu Baqi Muhammad Al-Katib. One of them is Baqi Muhammad, Al Katib and another one is Al Qarib because uh, he was from uh, Bukhara in Uzbekistan at this time. Al Qarib Baqi Muhammad Al Bukhari. And here is Tammat Hazal Imarat Ash Sharifa, Pisane Arba, Sabrina, and Tesame, Vietnam, Ostad, Hodahodi. It's the uh, excellent inscription in uh, Iranian souls style and uh, three gravestone. Another building is uh, Jama Mosque of Delhi. Jama Mosque of Delhi, it's uh, the largest mosque in India and was established by Shah Jahan in 1060 Hijri, uh, the 1650 AD. The main inscription of the mosque is written by Nurullah Ahmad in source script. 
این معرب تکنیک using black stone in white marble in each of them we have several <coughs> texts Persian and at the end of the inscription here okay, it's a <coughs> space for signature of artist Katabahu Nurullah Ahmad the red for in the 17th century a large amazing palace called the Lal Qila in Indian language was built by Shah Jahan. There are several Persian inscriptions in Nastali script in this fort. Some of which are located in the king's bedroom. <coughs> Most of them are uh, <coughs> in Mu'arrah uh, technique of uh, white marble, black one. All of them in, <coughs> are in this technique. Musa. Musa is the name of uh, black stone in the white marble. And it's a window of bedroom of Shah Jahan. And the texts, all of them are Persian. In the another part of the presentation, <coughs> I reviewed inscriptions of Fatpur Sikri. Uh, it's a capital city in Akbar period near Agra, and Agra, Punjab, and Deccan. In Fatpur Sikri, it's a Boland Darwaza. Boland means uh, tall <coughs> because it has uh, more steps. Fatpur Sikri, this city was established near Agra in the Akbar Shah period, 16th century, and after his reign, it uh, lost its power. This complex has a lot of Persian and Arabic inscription. The main entrance is called Boland Darwaze, and it uh, perched above several steps. We can see the tomb of uh, Salimuddin Chashti in the um, yard of <coughs> this place that was built of white marble stone. It's the signature of the, this signature is uh, exactly in this part of Boland Darwaze. It's Kataba, Hazal Kataba, Hussein Ibn Ahmad Al Chashti. It's notable, uh, use the Chashti, uh, Che letter in Arabic sentence because uh, in Arabic language we don't have che, but uh, he used it. There's actually there only one dot. Yeah, exactly. It's there's actually chesty. chesty. It doesn't mm -hmm. say cha. No, yes, no, it's, it's che. Oh, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> maybe uh, Ben Ahmad al Chashti. Okay. Prefer Chashti to Arabic language. It's inscription of Muhammad Ma'asum Nami. <coughs> it has a museum of uh, inscription. It's a, <coughs> a tomb of one famous uh, rulers, the Nastali stone inscription. Yes, and the at the end, Salah Vesalash, it's a chronogram poems. 
refer to data built and more gravestone several of them uh, not any um, inscription very simple stone and it's a uh, <coughs> very nice <coughs> calligraphy in the east of Salimuddin mausoleum there is a tomb of Muhtasham Khan Persian chronogram with date 1634 the inscription has not any accent of Indian artist and has the style of Mir Ali al Khate from Herat and a mosque from the Akbar Shah period in the west of complex the first line is uh, Quranic Arabic language and the second line is a uh, Persian poems another place in Agra uh, very interesting and notable Etemados Dole Etemado Dole Tehrani Mausoleum in Jahangir period. It's very unique, all the walls, another part <coughs> with Muarra of colorful stone and one piece of stone uh, instead of window. And in this, it's very difficult to find, uh, for example, a yellow uh, stone or another <coughs> color can use it's a section of repair with uh, very simple tools like a temato dole tehrani period and in this building we have several inscription in soul's style and signature of calligrapher at the end is <coughs> Abdul Nabi al Qureshi, but without the date and in uh, Adra it's a uh, Amber Fort a unique Persian inscription from Akbar period in this uh, fort, uh, we can just one inscription, it's uh, unique, just, <clears throat> and it's uh, in Persian, uh, relate to 1599. It's not uh, excellent nostalgia, it's just good, we can <laughs> read it. And near the Taj Mahal, it's a uh, Agra fort. It's very similar to Red Fort in Delhi. Jahangir throne. There are some lines of Persian poems all around the throne in excellent Nastalir script in <coughs> best decorated with arabesque pattern. It's uh, details of around the, this black stone, Peye Tariq U. Befek Shodam, it's a chronogram, Padashahi Katir U Sazab. Very nice inscription in Nastariq. And uh, another notable things uh, uh, in the Agra Fort is the biggest stone dish for water. It's very big and around uh, this stone we have several uh, Nastaliq and uh, Persian poems. We can read it uh, very difficult. Mulkodin Shod Jahangir 
بن شاه اکبر ایتس دی سیکند جاست بی کان رید خجالت اور لایک دیس اور هوز The material of this stone is not good with raining and other things uh, destroyed. The <coughs> most famous building in India, Taj Mahal, has several inscription in Mu'arrab technique. It's uh, very difficult, of course. Detail of another part. Four calligraphers worked uh, on this inscription but the master of them uh, was Abdul Haq Shirazi or Amanat Khan. It's uh, the signature of calligrapher. It's uh, notable, it's rare. In this building, we don't have uh, any name of, uh, for example, Shah Jahan or Mumtaz Mahal. But the calligrapher can write his name at the end of the inscription Al Fagir Al Hagir Amanat Khan Al Shirazi. Just we can uh, <coughs> see one name in all the building Amanat Khan Al Shirazi Fi. It's uh, two kind of date. One of them relate to Shah Jahan, and one of them is Hijri. Hezaro Chelo Hashte Hijri, Motabere, Davos, Dahome, Juluse, Mubarak. It's a source script, and some place is uh, nice, and uh, in some of part of inscription is not uh, more excellent. Amanat Khan <coughs> built it a Sarai near the Agra called Amanat Khan Sarai in Punjab of India. It's uh, this time uh, near Lahore but uh, in India. It's a very uh, <coughs> interesting building. Amanat Khan wrote this inscription, inscriptions in source script, but not in uh, stone technique. It's near the Lahore, changed the technique to Iranian techniques. It's uh, Kashi. It's a mosque of this Sarai. Yes, and uh, after this, we go to Hyderabad, Dakan. Uh, it's a Charminar, very famous <coughs> building. Dakan and the Hyderabad uh, are very the large place with several <coughs> places, building, inscription. Mm, I just selected uh, a part of this um, in Golconde near the in Hyderabad. More than 70 of the population of Hyderabad are Muslims and most of them are Shia. <coughs> Their religious background can be traced by the gravestone in Golconda. Uh, they select the black color <coughs> for gravestone. Remaining from the 
قطب شاهی را that lasted from 1580 to 1687. Golconda is now a part of Hyderabad. Among the numerous tombs in Golconda, the most notable ones belong to seven kings of Qutb Shahi. Qutb Shahi in uh, Indian uh, accent is Qutb Shahi. <coughs> Dynasty. From Sultan Goli Otpshah to Mirza Nizamuddin Ahmad, whose tomb has left incomplete, and the tomb of Hayat Bakhshi Begum. Each of them is one tomb, and at the end of each, one, two, three <coughs> gravestone. Like this. All the stone, the color of them uh, <coughs> are black, and uh, this part is like Tohra, it's a special style of calligraphy, and in this part, we have a sentence repeat in all of them like this and we have the name of Imams after Allah Muhammad Ali in another like Hassan Hussein uh, up to 12 Imams they are very the nice and excellent gravestone one piece is very Important. So the black is the stone, and they chipped the way around. Yes, it? all the stone <coughs> is black. It's not a, a surface color. And sometimes at the end, it's a date. So I didn't get it. Are you saying that it's black and they carved it in white? And some of them uh, are broken and we can see the original material of the back of them. All of them are uh, black in original uh, color. So what's that white, white background? Yes, uh, it's uh, when <coughs> uh, we can cut some part, uh, the <coughs> color of that, it's uh, a bit different of the um, this part it's very the i don't know what's this uh, in english uh, when it's a uh, seigali it's uh, very black dark and we um, <coughs> cut it it's a bit uh, different We can see it's very rare. Uh, this style is ma'qali uh, or <coughs> banai. We can use it uh, just uh, with another material like kashi in Iran, but <coughs> it's in gravestone. Uh, start from here, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and it's a surah of Quran, Qul huwallahu ahad, and like this up to end it's very difficult to use uh, on the stone without any point it's a very primitive form of kufic it's uh, another one it's used the uh, nastali style <coughs> And they uh, covered uh, them and don't permit to take photograph and other things. It's very uh, difficult. It's too
two details of gravestone in Persian uh, souls style. Some of them <coughs> uh, are uh, poems in Arabic, not Ali and Mazharul Ajaib or this part, Kullu Hammen wa Ammen Sayanjali, it's Arabic. Bebelayateka Ya Ali, Ya Ali, Ya Ali. And it's uh, another Surah of Quran, Ayatul Kursi. It's a uh, source script. <coughs> it's a complete image of one side of the gravestone. selected the bibliography because uh, we can <coughs> uh, write more articles and books at the end. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Hamid. Um, I've got a question about Indian salts. The Arabic ones. So, what's the main characteristic? They seem to have a fat or a tapering alif. Is that the main difference? Could you show them? Um... Yes, uh, we have uh, some details of them. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. For example, here <coughs> it's at the end a bit big, mm. and after this, uh, <coughs> it change to this part. It's just the Indian accent of souls. Are oh, the proportions the same though as in Iran? Yes, and uh, another form I can show, it's uh, Indian souls. Indian calligrapher yeah. change the form. They are not, uh, for example here, fi sabil, sin is above mm. and a bit mm. be come down and for example uh, deform the lam in sabil mm. but we don't have uh, permitted in uh, Iranian uh, souls style to change the form of letters or compose with the arabesque uh, very simple it's very aesthetic and beautiful but uh, it's uh, out of the rules in, in Persian on, or Arabic calligraphy. In, we can, uh, it's, uh, it's horribly modern, that one, that last one. Uh, it's stone. No, it's a stone, uh, but uh, Indian like to the color mm. of them. It's uh, related to uh, Nizamuddin Olya yeah. period, uh, it's very ancient mask, but uh, the color change it to a modern form. It's uh, the one before, it's really, with that sort of green yeah. little picture before, you had the nastali yeah, uh, over the door. That yeah, one. this one. That can't be. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that looks sort of really, yeah, it's, it's Yes, nice. it's, it's a uh, very nice uh, from uh, Shah Jahan period. Mm. Uh, the technique of this is Muarrab, it's the, the black stone in the marble. It's uh, very uh, difficult. The writing, the calligraphy is simple, but the technique of the build... And this year that goes back, is yeah, that... Yeah, it's a picture that's... of being in a stallion. Right. At the top where it says Therni, yeah. I suppose it says Therni, 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 So this year that goes back, yes. is this an Indian trick? No, it's uh, common in Nastaliq, yeah. like another one, Ni'matullahi. In Iran we used it at the end of the lines, <laughs> but uh, here calligrapher, the middle of lines, like to do it. Hakim Shah Jahan Abad. 
Yeah, and I wanted to ask about this one. You said yes. that was, did you say that was Sulz as well? Yes, it's uh, it a so bit uh, near to the Persian Sulz. Because in Sulz script, uh, we have this part mm. at the <coughs> start of Aleph or Lam. We have mm. more. So, so. It's a different between Sulz and Nas. In Nas, another script, we don't have this. We call the uh, Torre or Sarak. Hmm. But this doesn't look like six, this panel. Because huh? mm -hmm. you go back one. This yeah. two. Uh, that one doesn't look terribly mm -hmm. like source, does it? I mean, it looks more like this. The arrangement of the. Yes, get my proportions. Yes, at the uh, beginning of uh, push, we have like this. Uh -huh. It's uh, special for souls and muhabbat. Ab push qariban hamin giyah basas. Or in beginning of bas, we have like this. And be qair, we have a thing called uh, sarak or torre. But we don't have it in Nas or Nastali, another script. And here is Muhaqqaq uh, and source. We have it sometimes like this and here. Any other questions? Yes. I, I was always explained that this funny tale of the Ya mm -hmm. is, a, is a peculiarity of the Indian Nastali. But if it is not, what <coughs> what are they? What is the difference between Indian and uh, classical Persian study? Mm, it's common. It's not a difference. Before Nastali, we have like this year come back mm. of the start of line in the source style in the inscription in the Svahan Shiraz or in Bukhara in Uzbekistan uh, this time. And after this, it's uh, entrance to Nastaliq after this. But uh, the ancient uh, uh, example, uh, all of them are in Souls script. It's uh, common in, in uh, Iran, India, Arabic countries. Yes, of course. Was well, Souls um, started after Nastaliq? Uh, in inscriptions, uh, souls is uh, very ancient, after the Kufic mm. style, uh, from uh, 900 years before, um, almost, uh, souls started to um, inscription, more than manuscript, mm. it's just uh, in inscriptions, uh, after Kufi, uh, more inscriptions in Iran, in uh, all uh, Arabic countries uh, are uh, souls mm. because it's uh, very uh, nice for inscription. We can read it from the long distance. Mm. But Nastali uh, or Shekhastekali, <coughs> another script, uh, it's not uh, this uh, special <coughs> quality. Uh, we can read the souls um, from long distance. Mm. It's very clear. Where we have child was asking about the the fat olives for mm. for the English mm -hmm. Like this. No, just the well, or, yeah, it's the same. Now, my question is about the the yes, this one mm -hmm. because we have several layers of um, sort of depth, right? And it's very three dimensional almost. Mm. Yes, of course, uh, harmony is uh, very important. For example, artists uh, change the form of Allah. Mm, it's not uh, in rule of souls, but in this inscription, it's very beautiful. Mm. It mm. has a harmony with another 
letters with this arabesque, for example. It's not a good aleph in, uh, for example, <coughs> uh, Iranian souls, but it's uh, nice uh, near the, for example, this one, another one, another one. At the end, totally, it has a good harmony in color, in forms, and all the accent. Just we compare uh, Indian accent with uh, Iranian or Arabic accent, just it. So this is a, it's another piece, it's like this Roman mosaic technique, right? You were talking about the inlaid uh, black stone and marble, right? So this is another feature of the Indian. Um, it's uh, the common uh, technique in all the countries but the Mu'arraq, uh, the black stone uh, on the white marble, it's uh, just special for uh, India. We cannot find any example in Iran, for example, Mu'arraq. It's very rare. But uh, in the epitaph, all the place in India, we can find uh, several examples of them. Is this a precious stone? Is it jet or something? Or what? Musa. I know, it's called Musa, it's the technique, but the stone... Mu'arraq. Yeah, I don't the know stone it's... itself, is that precious stone? It could be no. obsidian or something. What's that nice black stone? Anyway, I wondered if that's why people were taking it out, because it was precious. Yes, it's uh, very difficult to make a letter uh, equal of them in the marble yeah. and can do it very difficult. Cool. So. Um, my question is about um, any patterns or correspondences that you might have noticed between type of script and choice of material because you show that amazing survey all across India it was the choice of red stone or the black stone or marble or I think you, cho you showed one example of tile inscriptions. Um, do you notice patterns which are specific to regions or do you notice correspondence between type of script and type of material? It's uh, related to the place, to weather, another like uh, uh, this, uh, for example, in Iran on, or uh, in <coughs> different uh, weather of India, we can find uh, like uh, Isfahan, more tiles, tiles, tiles but uh, it's uh, different in India uh, with the raining and the weather of uh, the, for example, Delhi, tiles uh, was uh, destroyed uh, with, uh, yes, 10 years. And uh, for this reason, they change it to just stone. Uh, I showed uh, just uh, one example of this. It's near the Lahore. Uh, from Lahore to Iran, uh, we can have uh, more uh, examples of this technique. But in uh, India, uh, we cannot uh, find it. I think she may have meant that uh, this different stone has different quality. It's either harder or, you know, some is easier to make. So maybe that sometimes if you use a particular stone, it lends itself to a particular calligraphy, whereas other stone might, you know, I mean, some might be harder or easier. Aren't they? So. And uh, sometimes uh, it uh, relates to like this. Uh, <laughs> People can do this technique, it's very difficult. Uh, in India, for example, maybe uh, we can, more <coughs> people can do this technique. But in Iran, it will be very expensive. Because mm. uh, it's marble, cannot, basically. Yeah. Yes, uh, for example, uh, <coughs> for two months, uh, just for this inscription, they uh, prepare to another technique uh, they can build it uh, in one week, for example. Uh, not very expensive. Like this. Smart. Uh, just 
Just a little question. Did you say um, this is quite unique to India, but um, I just overheard a remark. Uh, probably. Um, this is also found in Italy. That, that I think that, that that might have been the question, I believe. Mm, the technique. This sort of technique hmm. of inlaying um, one type of stone into another. This technique? Um, yes. It's uh, <coughs> special uh, related to uh, India. Uh, we cannot uh, find uh, more example of this, um, for example, in Iran or Turkmenistan, Afghanistan. <coughs> Maybe in Europe. Yeah. 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 I, I, I just said it's Roman mosaic, yeah. but it's, it's a type of Greek. Yeah. When you use the multicolored stone, it's really pictures of. With primitive uh, tools, it's very difficult to uh, do this technique. I was also thinking of um, those exceptionally fine manuscripts where the script is cut out. I remember, mm. I, I can't remember the, the term. You know, the ones that look like don't tell, where the script is just being excised and you see through the page. It's a very similar aesthetic. Mm -hmm. What was it called, Charles? I, I can't think. remember. Yeah, but I, I wonder whether they're contemporary, whether they're Indian examples. No, um, it's not related to India. Uh -huh. It's uh, we call the, another name for this. It's attai, cutting the paper. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we can the ancient uh, example of this uh, relate to Tamuri period in Muratka of. Uh, from Herat and some of them in Tabriz in Iran. It's common uh, between uh, Uzbek, Afghan, Iranian <coughs> artists uh, and uh, similar to this technique, maybe, but uh, uh, it's uh, different <coughs> of this. Uh, uh, that technique is uh, more difficult like this mm -hmm. because sometimes it's uh, the material is paper it's yeah. uh, very yeah. difficult to cutting this mm -hmm. and uh, stick to another paper mm -hmm. it's very difficult but uh, it's a stone we think uh, of course it's uh, uh, most uh, difficult than the paper but both of them are the same so delicate the paper is incredible <laughs> Remind me, for example, when you were showing the view from the Shah's bedroom, do you remember the, the art? Yeah, the view from his bedroom in the Red mm -hmm. Fort. Mm -hmm. Can you show me that slide, please? Yes, it's a... Uh, it really reminds me... This is a horrible the, thing, isn't it? It's a lovely <laughs> stone. <laughs> the decoration of the... That's the one I don't like. ...margins in the manuscript, with the gold in... I think it was further, I think it was later, not earlier. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'll cover that blue. It's not like a sort of wedding cake that's gone wrong. So. <laughs> Yes, it's a painting, but uh, it's not like a manuscript. <laughs> yes, it's painting, but this part is not a color; just it's uh, another mm. stone mm -hmm. yeah. like this in Muarra technique. About the paper, we have a book in Iran. Um, the name is uh, Art of uh, Cutting the Paper, Honare mm Kavazburi, -hmm. um, with Yahya Zoka. It's mm -hmm. just uh, speak about the, this art. Mm -hmm. How can we cut the paper and uh, use uh, this art? What about the stone? Uh, I didn't uh, see uh, any books uh, exactly related to this subject. Thank you so much. Again. Thank you, Hamid. Well, I'd like to thank Hamid for all his hard work and um, his very careful.
pronunciation of everything because I know it's been very difficult <laughs> for him to practice his English while he's been here and he's really done fantastically well. I think there's 